There are some that claim that the Noor in America from the feedlots and the commercial, commercial poultry operations alone could produce the equivalent of all of America's present natural gas production. Synthetic gas and biodiesel. And you're killing two birds with one stone now because you're not polluting the environment. You know, instead of building Korea first and then mining the methane, you take the garbage and you turn it into methane right away. Technology exists. So now they're talking about big things. I'm waiting for somebody to come up with the idea, wait a minute, why do we need a centralized sewage system? Why do we need garbage collection at all? Why can't every household have a mini depolarization unit that turns all this stuff into energy? And what are you doing when you turn on your gas? You're burning methane. Well, you're producing methane all the time. I hate to tell you. <laughs> Hopefully not in a crowd of the <laughs> energy are going to result in the densification of the human population. Already two years ago, we reached a milestone in human history in which over 50% of the human race now lives in cities. By the end of the century, 90% of the human race is going to live in cities. Now I'm going to be counterintuitive to you. What is the greenest piece of geography in the United States in terms of its carbon footprint? Anybody know? Who said that? Manhattan. New York in general is one half the carbon footprint of the rest of the country. Manhattan is one third. Vertical is efficient. And if you've ever been to Manhattan, you know you don't see the pathologically obese people that you see everywhere else in the United States. Because people who live in Manhattan and work in Manhattan, if they have to get to a meeting and it's less than a mile, what do they do? They walk. My God, I have legs. <laughs> it's a miracle. And these increased energy costs are going to result in what I call the deglobalization of production and agriculture, while reinforcing the globalization of non-personal services, and that includes a lot of IT services. Because the cost of shipping goods from afar will offset the benefits of cheap labor. We saw it almost immediately when oil hit 150. They were already moving factories back to the United States, from China, not even China, from Mexico. The closer it is to the market, the less you're going to pay for the transportation component. So that offsets cheap labor. And by the way, if the world is moving towards middle class, you're going to run out of cheap labor. So those two things are meeting. Factories will be turnkey, totally robotized, multi-purpose, uniform units that will be franchised to regional franchisees. For example, one might buy the Austrian or Israeli or New York franchise for Benetton or Sony. Quality control will be administered over an intranet from the home office or some quality control hub. Maybe that hub could be in Israel. And one of the areas in which Israel might have an advantage is, what I, is, what, is that of urban air, agriculture, or what is called vertical agriculture, what I call urban plantations. 30-story buildings, growing stuff. Israel could satisfy its entire agricultural needs in an area smaller than Yerucham. This is not something that's pie in the sky. There are countries, and a few of our cousins in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the Gulf are already playing around with this idea, the Chinese also. It's very efficient. It's like 1 20th the water. You don't need insecticides or herbicides. It's totally automated. Just think of it this way. Think of Israeli hothouses turning one on top of the other. That's what we're talking about. Israel has a tremendous advantage, not to build the damn things. Maybe we could. Maybe we could build them, then export them. Not export tomatoes. See, that's really stupid, exporting tomatoes. 
Because when we export tomatoes, we're exporting water. No. We export water to Sweden in order to give employment to workers from Thailand, and we call that Zionism. <laughs> You know, it's like, what? So, well, one of the achievements of Zionism is, besides the rebirth of the Hebrew language and all the other achievements, is to finally erase the racist canard that Jews are smarter than other people. <laughs> Energy storage systems. Energy storage systems, and I don't use the word battery because that sort of like limits your imagination. You know, battery is an energy storage system. For intermittent energy sources, energy storage systems for intermittent energy sources and differential billing advantages will become a necessity. You know what I mean by differential billing? It means like before, yeah. between 4 and 7 in the afternoon in August, you pay twice as much for electricity that you pay between midnight and six in the morning. We're going to build another 1,000 megawatt coal production thing in Ashkelon. You know for how many hours are you in a year? 100 hours. And then you know how I knew that? I looked at other countries. I took New Jersey, for example, about the same size as us. <coughs> in January, they need 10,000 megawatts. In August, between four and seven, they need 18,000 megawatts. So the entire system is built for 18,000 megawatts. That's the Edison grid, by the way. Anything dumber than that? <sighs> and not only, is it, not only is it cost per, if you take the 100 hours that you're paying for, you're paying like $10,000 per kilowatt hour, for, for kilowatt hours, I mean, it's ridiculous. But you're also using up really valuable real estate. that could generate taxes either from you know, tourist hotels or residential areas, or you know, it's on the sea. We're building these monsters to burn coal. But well, what is the cost of burning coal to our health? And we're, we, have, we, have, we have a national health system. How much bronchitis and upper respiratory sicknesses do we have because of this crap that we're putting in? What? Always the margin, the marginal of the most expensive in any system. Also in the army. That's a lot in the army. <coughs> We'll talk about that in Q&A, okay? I foresee a future market in home batteries. We have batteries for our cars. bar Ilan University researchers are making advances in magnesium batteries. Too heavy for transportation, but suitable for home use. Also, other kinds of batteries. I call them post-lithium ion batteries for transportation. Everybody think of we had the lead battery for 50 years. We had the lithium battery for five, 10 years. And we, that's the final word? No, it's a multi-billion dollar a year business. We're not going to invent new batteries. And you know what natural resource we really have a lot of in the Dead Sea? Magnesium. And the electric car. <coughs> now you can believe in the better place system of Shia Gassi or not. I have happened to check, I've checked most of the objections against it. And I found that they're ridiculous, except for one, the problem with electromagnetism of such sigma, that much electromagnetism might not be that good for your health. <coughs> That's the one objection. But given everything I've just said, electric trans personal transportation is the future, the very near future. Get used, get used to it. In conclusion, I just want to say that the 20th, first century energy crisis offers Israel the same kind of business opportunities that IT and water technology have, and perhaps even more. I think clean tech is the future even more than high tech. By the way, clean tech is also high tech. <laughs> <laughs>